Hey, it's Jaime with Echo Real Estate Advisors. Today we're looking at the new feature that Remind has come out with, which is the ability to produce a CMA. Now before you click off, don't. <laughs> don't hang with me. I know that there's a lot of other ways to do a CMA, and I hear you. There's a new and better way to always do something, right? Or at least that's the claim. You may be doing RPR, you may be doing a cloud CMA, you may be doing directly from the MLS, you may be creating those CMAs from there, and the last thing you want is another way to do something that you already know how to do and do it efficiently and effectively. But just with life, personally, I, like, I have a curious mind, and I certainly want to give this a fair shot. I've gone through and I've tested it out with a few properties already just to understand the functionality of it and I do like it I do think it, that it's quite promising so right now what I'm doing is the CMA the CMAs that I produce are through RPR because I do think that's a very good product I think it's a phenomenal product and really good for the value that it that it produces so that's the way that I go about creating the the CMA you may be using cloud CMA uh, you may be using directly from the MLS or whatever other software that you're using. That's how you're doing it. But I do think Remind has a lot of promise, and I wanted to share that with you uh, today. And more of the functionality of it, I know you already have your set ways of how to actually create a CMA, and a CMA is subjective. So there are some general rules that that you would that you would follow, like well, you you want as close as many properties close to the subject property you want to be the past three months if you can't find so enough comps within the past three months you move back to six months you know there's or go progressively um, four months five months six months until you have enough information at your fingertips to produce a CMA so I'm not going to go into that into that as much I want to show you the functionality because it, that is in and of itself a entirely entirely different course or video which would take hours and there's CEs to actually do that so that wouldn't be the best use of our time outside of me spending a minute just explaining that all right so what we're gonna do this is a, this is an area that I'm quite familiar with so we're gonna go with the corner lot because I like corner lots I'm gonna track it just so I don't get lost you're going to click through. And right now, you have this little short bar, or I, I guess sidebar. I don't necessarily know what, what this is called. I suspect this is going to go away right now. It's telling you, hey, we have a new feature, so um, use it. But I suspect that this will go away. I do think that they're going to keep the, you know, where to actually go to create the CMA up here. At least that's my guess. But when you click here, you're going to see the Cloud CMA, and then you're going to see Remind CMA. With the Cloud CMA, it's a link to the login, which personally, I don't know. I go to my dashboard over here, and I get access through it that way. If you have your login information, then props to you. Go ahead and, and use it if you want to go down that way. But what we're looking at today is a Remind CMA. Okay? And see, we've tracked this property for you. So, had I not had I not put the uh, the star to track it, they would have tracked it for me anyway. Now, this property, this this property in this area is gonna hover between three and five three and five beds. So, I'm just gonna tidy up a few a few details here. And this this area has at max four ba baths, if, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm I'm going off of memory, but in, in this area, I am familiar enough to no. let's include five. There may be one house here that has four and a half. All right, square footage, you're built. The neighborhood that we're talking about was built in the 90s, so that's that's pretty much it. Number of floors. I'm gonna leave everything. I'm gonna leave everything the same. Well, actually, let me just. No, we'll just go ahead and leave everything the same. 
for the time being. Again, I don't want to, as you can see me, I'm trying to fight drilling in and, and going into an entirely different course, but on this one, I do promise to be, to be brief and to the point. Lot size, basement, garage, parking, building type. We can select single family, and then you see the status. You see the active, pendings, and closed. You can add additional, you can add additional uh, statuses like coming soon, um, active under contract. I would like to see that. Canceled. Mm, I'm not too interested in that. Expired. Not too interested in that. Hold. Withdrawn. We'll keep this. We'll keep these, but know that, that that's where you can add the statuses that you're trying to pull for. What's most important for us is the closed, right? Because those are the strong comps that we that we're after. List price, sold price, not interested in that. And then the sold time frame will give you a default of six months. So you do want to tidy that up. That's that's I know I, I said I wouldn't get into an, a CE of comps, but I do know enough. And want to share that basic enough to. What am I doing? Okay. Looks like it put me up here. To share that we want to go at least with three months. I can I can give you that much without drilling in, and making it a CE. The distance we want to keep it as close as possible, especially in this area, as you have. As you have, several different neighborhoods that. that are quite different from each other. All right, it gave me a little error message up there. I don't know what that was about. All right, now you get your comps, right? And what's super cool, and what's really making me reconsider my RPR as, a, as my default CMA software, is this little feature up here is off MLS property that matches your criteria so there's a there's a property in here which I'm very familiar with <laughs> um, that was off market and when you click on it it adds it so it's added into the it's added into the valuation and I just think that's awesome I think that that's one of the key features that really stands out to me when it comes to an actual CMA. So it it goes and pulls all the information from the CAD, it being Remind, pulls information from the CAD, it pulls information from home warranty companies, and God only knows, and I guess the developers only know how many how many other places it pulls information from. But I do think that it's cool that it goes and and picks properties that are off market. And you can include them because then you do see, <clears throat> you do see the uh, properties that, that have exchanged hands. So that's pretty cool. All right, um, I, it pulled a rental here, so I'm going to remove that. On the left hand side, right here, what you're going to see me do is remove. You can edit the properties that don't necessarily match the criteria that you're looking for. For it, as you clearly saw. The example here was there was a rental that did not make sense in being included in the CMA. Then the rest of them, um, you have actives, which for the sake of this example, we're going to go ahead and remove any actives. But just, again, more of the functionality. You have your own rules on what you will include, what you won't include. I just want to show you more of the functionality. And up here, you have all of the filters. If you see something's a little bit off, do the quick view up here of the header. See, hey, did I add something that just does not make sense? Um, did I miss something? Only you know your market, uh, and it's a good way to check it. You can see your off, off MLS deals, pending. Well, that one's been pending for a while, actually. Huh, gonna need to check and see what's up with that. All right, so you have your closed, you have your, your active, and you have your, well, you, you can have all of them. If you need to go back and edit any of your criteria, you go here, but for our purposes, we're gonna save and continue. Now what's cool is Remind has your back. If you're a part of a larger brokerage, chances are that it's on here. 
And you can select your own colors if you're part of EXP, if you're part of Century 21, Keller Williams. It'll, it'll add that little touch of customization to your brokerage. Now, if you aren't one of the bigger, if you aren't with one of the bigger brokerages, you can do a custom color, which for me, the hex code is 990000. So it's my red. So it, now I have my personal red. And then the other color that I have is black and it's customized to me it goes further you can upload your company logo which I'm just going to include my sound wave which a lot of people mistake for a globe which it's not and then well it's already added my it already kept my um, my profile pick so that's where you would do it and the name of let's put John Doe put Bill because I think that's actually the owner of the name I'm sorry the owner of the property but we'll just go ahead and put John Doe save and continue and what I like about the presentation of it it's very very to the point you have your comparables overview, you have a solid range, you have estimated value, list of sold um, difference, you have days on market, you have the average, the low and the high. Um, so if you wanted to tidy that up, you of course could, you would just go back and edit it. But for our purposes, that's good enough. And um, yeah, so we'll go down to the area demographics it doesn't expand here but when you go to print it will actually expand so you see the charts and what I like about this it's not necessarily for the listing side I like it more for the buyer side where if you were strapped for time or just wanted to present a, a CMA to your buyers then this is quite valuable. This is something that the CMA wouldn't necessarily, if you had pulled it from the MLS, wouldn't necessarily help you with. You can see the the college, uh, who, the education. You're going to see high school. You're going to see what high school. Uh, you're going to see the level. Well, the level of education, the breakdown of who has children, who doesn't, the average size of the household, average income, and average age. You're going to see that in actual graphs, which is quite powerful when you're look when you're talking with a buyer that um, are trying to build their you know they're trying to search a home for a home in their ideal community you have the average value valuation estimate you have the first American uh, appraisal and then e-appraisal then you have Zillow and then the comparable properties that you included so it's pretty cool at the end of it it should be about about four or five pages. Print the images, yes I do. Include valuations, yes. File it, we're gonna put, yeah, it should be fine. I'm gonna wait a few seconds. Then we pull it up. About five pages you see the cover page prepared by prepared for date that you prepared it the address all this information which I think you can include some additional information don't hold me to that but this is what the end looks like now something I did notice is this whole HB I am assuming it's a half bath um, I I'm assuming that th that's what that is, so I don't necessarily know why this isn't over there. That's the one thing that I, I would like clarification on, and I will seek it, but for the purposes of our uh, video, I don't have that information at this time, so sorry about that. You see the graphs that I was mentioning earlier. You have the breakdown. You have who has children, 
and then the average household. Now this was another discrepancy that I was curious about when it comes to one person versus two person. So I don't remember if, well, we can click over here. So as you recall, we saw two people here versus one per people here. Again, I will need clarification on that. Fortunately, I don't have it at this time, but with, any, with anything else, this capability dropped today, I'm not today, this week. So there may be some kinks that are getting hammered out, but as far as what it presents to people, I absolutely love it. I shouldn't say love, That's um, I, it's overused. I like it a lot. I like it a lot, I like the way that it presents, I like the customization, and I like just clarity. It's something that I would, I would, if I was a consumer, I would look at this. The Cloud CMA, I know that I use it and I teach out of it quite a bit for a quick, you know, a quick hit when it comes to it. It's a landing page built for getting people's valuation in order or just you can drive traffic to it and get a, a quick lead off of it. But at the end of the day, a Cloud CMA will send 25 pages worth. So a lead will receive that information, but they won't necessarily know how to interpret it. And maybe you don't want them to know how to interpret it because you ideally want them to reach out to you or you reach out to them. But at the end of the day, 25 pages of information is a bit overwhelming and I don't want people to be off foot. So that's one of the reasons that I don't, you know, I don't necessarily go with Cloud CMA too much when it actually comes down to a CMA. I like the feature that it has of it being a, a lead generation, the landing page that it produces leads. But as far as the output, I'm not the biggest fan of. I do like this because it's not overwhelming. It, the way that it's presented is very intuitive and it provides good information that is interpretable by, by agents, by customers, clients, potential people that are wanting to sell or buy. So I do like that functionality. Again, you may not like that fact that you know people will take this information and then go off and use it for their own purposes, but at the end of the day, you are providing a service. Anyway, I'll get off my soapbox, and the rest of it is the summary details, summary details, um, the off MLS properties. So I do like it as far as am I going to use this down the road? I do believe I will be using this down the road. Just right now, RPR has a very strong product and I like it. I like it a lot, actually. So I do think that Remind is enough, brings enough value that I do want to explore it a bit further and introduce it into my systems when it comes to the CMA. Again, there are 10,000 ways to create a CMA. It's just whichever one, whichever one works best for you to be able to produce it. And the level beyond that is whichever one's going to provide the most service to your client. So there's that fine balance. Yes, you do want it to be beneficial to you because at the end of the day, you are producing it. But it, you also want it to be of value and as accurate as possible for your client to benefit. So overall, I do like Remind. As you can tell by the channel, there's a lot of videos about Remind because I'm sold on the product. But when it comes to its ability to produce CMAs, I think that they've done a, a really good job with it. Um, there may be a few things here or there that need to be tweaked, but it could have been the way that it was in, these properties were input into the systems that into the MLS that the CMA for that Remind, Remind produced just just wasn't able to read it, or some there's some discrepancy discrepancies that that happens. But at the end of the day, I'm super sold on it. If there's any questions? As always, please feel free to reach out. Like, comment, subscribe, share, anything and everything. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.